How's everybody doing? Hey, Coach, how are you this evening? Good, good. How about you? Doing very well. We're going to go ahead and jump into uh, questions for Coach Harrell. Coach, this was the, the biggest challenge with facing Tulane. They put up a lot of points this year. What, what kind of stands out about them? Yeah, you know, I think as you look at the stats and you look at them, you know, what's more film, I think it's a little bit different maybe. Um, they put up some impressive numbers offensively with scoring 37 points a game. Um, you know, they put up 66 against Southern Miss. We caught them uh, maybe at a good time and, and got it clicking there and rolling and, and still put up, you know, a bunch of points against Houston, a bunch of points against SMU and, and some, some good good football teams. And then uh, – but the thing that stands out to me is just their, their run game. They're averaging 225 a game on the ground. I think that's second in the league. Uh, their running backs is probably their best overall position. And they got a group of them back there, 20, uh, number five, number 11. All, all three are, are, are special in their own way. 20 is a bigger kid. Uh, not quite as big as the kid from Tulsa, but still, they, you know, 220, 225 pounds. So we got to make sure we do a great job tackling him. Uh, number 11. He'll play in the backfield. He'll play out wide. He'll come in motion, catch the jet. So you've got to make sure we know where he's at at all times. And, but that's that's the big thing. It sounds out to me that run game. The quarterback's a young kid, but he throws the deep ball really well. Um, the explosive plays, he, he's really good at putting the ball down the field. And I think they're putting him in situations where they can max protect and then three man routes and, and take some shots down the field as well. So, they, you know, their, their offensive coordinator, Will Hall, um, does a really nice job. I think he won the. Uh, the Division II Heisman uh, there in North Alabama when he was playing there. I uh, was a uh, coach at West Alabama when I was in Division II. Now, you know, at West Georgia, he won the national championship there. So he's done a really nice job everywhere he's been. And uh, he hasn't playing really well right now. Blake, your defense is getting better and better. Um, you're facing a good freshman quarterback this week in Michael Pratt, who's uh, thrown for nearly 900 yards already. Um, he's been pretty impressive so far for a freshman to step into this league and and find his way around. It seems to be getting better every week. He, he is, and he's a name we're going to know for a long time. I mean, he's he's a kid that's gutsy with the ball. He's, when I say gutsy, just if it's not there, he's going to take off scrambling. He's not going to slide, and he's going to pick up some yards with his feet. So does a good job with that. He's making good decisions, really hasn't made a whole lot of bad decisions for a freshman quarterback, um, and, and those are nice balls. So he, he's a kid that, you know, a year from now, he, he's going to be one of the top quarterbacks in the league. Hey, Blake, when you look at your cornerbacks, you know, and Nolan Johnson seems to be starting the last few weeks and Jaquan has come in later and kind of just flip them or rotate them. And can you just expand on how that's kind of worked or kind of just thought process of, of what they've kind of done lately? Well, I, th I think with our entire defense, the big key for us is keep them fresh and get them into the fourth quarter. And, and, and hopefully we can play our best football in the fourth quarter there. And with Jaquan, he's playing both sides, field and boundary. No one's just playing the boundary right now. Malik is playing the field. So, um, you know, no one gives you that little bit more length and a little bit taller body, longer body up there. So you certainly like to have him on the field and, and get him out there. And, you know, if you had a jump ball situation or a ball down the field, he's able to knock it down. Um, but in Jaquan, being able to play both gives you some flexibility there. So that's kind of the thought behind it. And all three have done a really nice job the last couple of weeks. Coach, can you talk about as far as, I know, a tough Tulsa game, but as far as the injury, piece of things, how are, how are you guys uh, healthy on that side of the ball? You know, we're, we're healthy. We You have your, you know, nicks and bruises and banged up a little bit this time of year, but nothing that's going to keep those guys out of a ball game on Saturday. I mean, they've all been practicing all week. You know, uh, some of them were limited earlier in the week, but they're, they're fired up and ready to go and, and full speed uh, today in practice, and, and we expect them to be full speed on Saturday as well. How did you guys probably play the best half of, of football under your watch against Tulsa? What changed maybe in the second half? I know you don't want to get too far into the X's and O's, but what did they start doing that maybe gave you guys some problems? Uh, we didn't get them on third down. That was the big key. You know, in the first half, I think they were only three of uh, three of 14, three of 16, something like that on third down. And three of the third downs they converted, one in the first half on third and eight. And we, we just didn't match number two in the curl there. And then uh, in the second half, they had two, three, and ones. Where in the first half, those three and ones were three and five, three and sixes. And we, we were, you know, executing on those downs. Three and one for us with a 230-pound running back was, was a little bit tough. And I think we did a great job of stopping the run. It gave them some flexibility. Um, and then first drive of the half, they, they went right down the field, get, you know, just didn't handle that really well, come out of the half like we should have. You'd like to set the tempo there at the first drive of the second half. Um, but the key all goes back to, you know, stopping the run, putting them in third and uh, second and extra long, third and extra long situations where they're behind the sticks, behind the chains. 
and the success rate plays in our favor a little bit more. With everything the program has been through this year, what is it about this group of players that you feel makes them so resilient? They're, they're a lot of fun to be around. Like, so, you know, we practice Sunday night, Monday night this week just because of election day. And uh, I really thought Monday was one of our better practices of the year after coming off of all the circumstances that we've been throughout the season, Friday night, uh, the middle of a pandemic, everything that you could, you could possibly imagine. They, they seem to put that to the side and they go practice with what you see on Saturday with great effort and great energy and, and really fun group to be around. And it's fun because, you know, each time they touch the practice field, they're getting better and better. So that, that's been rewarding as a coach. Your group seems to cause a lot of confusion for offenses, a lot of shiftiness, a lot of fast guys out there. It's a pretty good looking defense that you're putting together slowly but surely. And, um, you know, where do you feel like your defense is at right now and compared to where they kind of need to be? Well, I, I kind of thought like just looking back at it, stepping back in, in midsummer, uh, early camp, that it would take us a little while just as a learning curve with a new defense, young guys that, you know, by midseason, if we could survive, that we, we'd have a pretty good, you know, pretty good group that was going to fly around and, and could do, get some things done. And we're just starting to see that. They're starting to, you know, improve each week, understand the scheme, understand the calls. And we're able to carry quite a few calls into a game, which is, which is nice and does create some confusion for the offense, whether it be the, the quarterback, you know, like the first play of the game. Um, I think he was – we got pressure. He's expecting pressure and, and had an overthrow, and Warren Sabre was able to pick it. So that's – and that's a credit to our guys. They're able to handle all that. So they've been coming along each week. And it's just really nice to see them understand um, our scheme and then really buy into our culture as far as just playing hard, playing with maximum effort, you know, playing with great energy and, and pulling for each other. And that's what you really see right now is those guys, when somebody makes a play, we all make the play. And we, we call it juice points, but that's, that's what it's about. It doesn't matter. Offense makes a play, we all make a play. Defense makes a play, we all make a play. So. Um, that's been really nice to see. And, you know, I think we got to keep pushing forward and, and and make sure that we have consistency throughout the game. I mean, uh, Stephen talked about the first half there. We got to make sure we carry that throughout a ball game. And, and that's part of, you know, being a little bit younger and being a little bit inexperienced. But we got to we got to overcome that and move on and get past it and put a complete back game together. Coach, one of the only good things that happened this year as far as COVID is the extra year of eligibility, especially when you're trying to build a program, you're a new defensive coordinator this year, but you got to be happy with the way these guys are already responding. They bought into your schemes and on your side of the ball. And, and uh, it looks like they're having a lot of fun out there. They, they are. And I think that's, you know, that's, they're having fun. Coaches are having fun. It's, it's a, it's a good environment right now. And as you said, you know, we look out there and it doesn't matter who you're playing each week. You're like, well, this, this guy, we got him for four more years or three more years or five more, whatever it may be. So that's really exciting. And, and you look across the field and you're like, well, that kid, you know, he's a senior. Maybe he'll come back. Maybe he won't. So you're looking at a lot of the teams we're facing in the conference are senior dominated up front or senior dominated a certain position. So that I think that advantage plays in us for, for years to come. I was going off Mark's question earlier about, you know, kind of the scheme and where you guys are. Compared to Kennesaw State, when you had a, a full spring practice and everything, how far are you along in, in your installation? Do you still have stuff you can put in? <laughs> I think you can always tweak things. Um, I, I would say we're probably further along at this point um, than we were there at that time. You know, was, I was there for one season. We did have spring ball, but we've been able to handle a whole lot here, which which has been really good. And it says a lot for our players and, and our coaching staff. So that that's uh, that's been really good. Um, and we can add a few more things here and there, but the our focus right now is a hey, what we have and what we're going to take in a ball game. And get you know, being really sharp and really crisp with that. And, and execute at a high level. Okay, we've got time for one more question for Coach Harrell. All right, seeing there is none. Coach Harrell, thanks for your time. I hey, appreciate you guys. Y'all take care. Okay. Hello, fellas. How we doing? Hey, DK, how are you, sir? I'm good. Yourself? Doing well. We're just going to go right into questions for Coach Kirkpatrick. Let's do it. Hey, Donnie, I want to ask you, uh, Coach Houston recently has talked about even the, the South Florida game, how walkthroughs have kind of been telling going into games and how that's been kind of a, a thing with players and coaches that y'all have noticed that's been a real positive. Um, can you just kind of expand on that and with the offense, have you noticed the same type of thing during those walkthroughs kind of leading up to games? Yeah, I really have. Uh, you know, I think what, what it is, it's a maturing process. 
of the guys learning how to to stay on task throughout the week. Uh, there, there was a little bit of at the beginning, and I think last year, just kind of after Wednesday's practice, okay, you know, Hayes in the barn, work's done. You know, tomorrow's a helmet practice. Friday's a travel day or a walkthrough. You know, there's some meetings and stuff like that. And uh, there's a lot of things that really get cleaned up, you know, after the hard physical practices on Tuesday and Wednesday that I think now they're just starting to understand that uh, those mental preparations and those last few walkthroughs uh, are where you, where you eliminate so many of the mistakes and where you start to learn the game plan. And amazingly, they're just now starting, I think, the last couple of weeks to realize that we kind of call the first couple of plays, you know, in those walkthroughs. Because then you kind of know, you know, how you're going to orchestrate the, the first part of the script. You know, on Tuesday and Wednesday, you're still just running plays for the most part and trying to learn how to block those fronts or how to attack those coverages. And there's no order to it necessarily, or it's in segments of this is just third down, this is first down, you know, this is red zone even. But then in the Thursday and Friday walkthroughs, I mean, we're like doing the script. Like this is going to be the first play of the game, you know, and this is going to be the first third down call. And this is going to be the first play when we get to it. So it's really valuable when they start to understand that and get comfortable with that. And, and that just now are those walkthroughs starting to really start, I think, to show that they've matured and it's showing on the field, I think. Coach, uh, just how can you assess Holton's play against Tulsa? And is it a case where if he plays that good every week, you guys are going to have a shot to win? I got to think so. I, he played uh, every play but one play, had one bad play in the, in the game. And really, it was my fault. Uh, to be honest with you, the interception, I'll take the blame for that. Uh, I called the play wrong. I called the, the, the protection backwards. And uh, I thought the back was lined up wrong. So I was, you know, on the headset saying, hey, the back's lined up wrong. They're like, no, you called it that way. Well, Houghton actually caught that. And he, he corrected the play and got us in the right play. But there was a little bit of a sense of frantic because he looked up and there was like two, three seconds left on the, on the play clock. So we had to get it snapped quick. Well, then a guy got beat. We got some pressure. And he did the one thing that he's, you know, he's, he, he did better. He, when the play breaks down and you've just got to play that it was there, but we missed our opportunity, then don't just force it. Don't just try to then, you know, turn it into something. And he threw a really, really poor ball and it got intercepted. And I tell you what, besides that, he was dead on. I mean, every throw, every read, just everything he did. I mean, you know, I didn't think about it during the game that much, but I know that I had a lot of confidence that, that, that he was playing well. But then, you know, when I started watching the film on the, on the bus and on the flight home, I was like, damn, this dude played good today now. I was like, that's what I'm talking about right there. You know, I went kind of caught up, walked back, and everybody else was asleep and woke him up and said, man, that is – that was – and you've had some bigger numbers, but you've never played any better than that. That was so efficient. He was just so dead on. Coach, Funny, tough break on Friday night. Yeah. Just want to ask you about uh, how are the players responding this week? Uh, I know there, it's a good thing as a coach you have the next game to, to focus on. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if we'd been an airplane pilot or something, I guess we'd have been done after that one. You know, that somebody had shot us down or something out there, <laughs> you, you wouldn't get to go again. So thank goodness we're not in that profession, I guess. Uh, you know, I don't know. The players, they, they flush it pretty good, I think, after the next day. I think one of the good things is when uh, – when you put that game away after you watch the tape and then you start practicing for the other team. And I don't know, they move on now, you know, the coaches, I have a harder time the next day. I, I drag a little bit after, you know, we don't, we don't win, you know, it's like you worked, you know, you worked all week and you didn't get paid or something, you know, well, this was no good, you know, but I think they kind of put it behind them. And, you know, coach Houston's done a great job with that. He told them, you know, it is what it is, and let's move on. Nobody nobody cares, really. I mean, I, well, they do. The Pirate fans care, you know, whatever, but nobody else really cares about that. And and so uh, we're, we're just kind of on to the next one right now, and we've, we've had a good week of practice, and I don't – nobody's brought up last week any, to be honest with you. It's all been Tulane. We have great respect for Tulane and what they've done there, uh, and uh, we're expecting a really hard-fought ball game, and we, we'll have to play well. But if we play well, we're getting to the point where we feel like we have a chance to win every time we go out there. 
Donnie, when you look at this matchup between you guys and Tulane, how well do you match up against them? And when you look at the, the video and you're trying to put something together for this week, um, how good of a ball game is this set up to be? Well, I, I think we do. I think we match up well. Now, the one thing is we haven't played them. And to be honest, with you, I haven't played any of these kids. So it's been a long time since I played Tulane. And uh, I know that Houghton was telling me about, you know, the, he, they played down there and, and some stuff. So, I mean, he's played against a couple of these kids. So sometimes film's a little deceiving, you know, you're, you're not a hundred percent sure, you know, once you played a team, then you can, I know this guy, you know, well, I know he's legitimately that fast or that tall, or this is how he plays. So I don't know, this will be a little bit of a feeling it out type deal, but I think right now we're just, we just concentrating a little bit more on us. You know, I think we've got some kids that feel like they can go compete against anybody in the country. That's what we want them to feel like. I think they're probably right. Um, we do have to play well. We have to be on our game. We have to have that passion. We have to have that energy, which we've had the last month. You know, there was a game earlier in the year that we did not. We just did not have that. I don't know why, you know what I'm saying? And like I say, that's my job to get the offense to have it. Um, but they're, they're getting now where they're more consistently doing that. And so uh, it's got all the makings of being a really good game. This whole league, can, everybody can play everybody pretty close right now. And then you throw in there sometimes somebody's out, you know, which you never truly really know, you know, who's out and who's in till you get out on the field. You know, pregame, we got about four guys searching down. All right, I see number two. I see number four. You know, I see number seven. Ooh, no 91, no 91, you know. So you're looking like he may be out uh, because – there's injury, and then there's this other mystery thing out there a little bit, too, that's getting some people. So, And nobody tells you about that, you know what I'm saying? Because you can't watch on film and say, oh, dude looks like he's got a temperature or something, maybe. You know, maybe he's got some signs or something. You can see a guy when he gets injured, you go, oh, you know what? He didn't play in the fourth quarter. Remember, in the third quarter, he, he got hit and he kind of limped or something. So there, there's a lot of stuff there that you just don't know. But uh, defensive, they got eight starters back from last year's team. So they've got some experience, got a lot of respect for a couple of their guys too. The, the two defensive ends, you, you better have a game plan for them. The, the line, one linebacker who did not play last week uh, can really cause some tough times out there. And, uh, you know, so they're, they, they, they're used to winning. They were a bowl team last year. So they had a great win. They, I mean, they, they beat Temple a lot. We were surprised when I saw that. I was like, wow, that was a big win. Uh, over Temple because we've got a lot of respect for Temple from last year having played them. Uh, so anyhow, I don't know. It's going to be fun to be home uh, again and play and, uh, you know, what, whatever our crowd is or whatever. But uh, even if they're not there, we fill them there a little bit too. So we're just, we're just kind of ready to go play. You know what I'm saying? I'm really looking forward to it. Coach, what are your, your thoughts as far on the tight end position? Are you happy with that production? Do you feel like there could be more there? Well, they're not getting as many catches. I say that to Fontel all the time. You know, I say, I, my, I say you know, I wish we were getting them a little more involved in the throwing game a little bit because Shane Calhoun can really be good at that. The problem is there, there's only one ball, and Sneed's a damn ball hawk. I mean, I'm telling you now, okay? You know, so so <laughs> it's like, you know, if you, if you played quarterback and you get a guy and he's open, and, you know, he's hot. You're going to keep feeding the guy, you know what I'm saying? And, and I probably lean that way a little bit, too, because of that. And, you know, so there's only one ball. And then, you know, you know Raji needs his touches, you know, too. So uh, I don't want to get too far away from, from him because, you know, he's a big play looking for a place to happen all the time, too. So we've just got a lot of guys that can, can get the ball and can – can make plays right now. You know, I, I'm telling the offense, I just, we should be scoring more points. You know what I'm saying? We're moving the ball pretty consistently. We punted twice last week. We had two punts and they were two of the first three drives. So sometimes you are kind of getting your legs under and you're getting your feeling. And them, them dudes were good on defense now. They, they, we, they, I'd watched some, shut some pretty good offenses down. And so uh, we were playing well. The turnovers are killing us. You know what I'm saying? With that, especially early. And and that's what's keeping us from scoring some points. We uh, we did miss, I thought, a great opportunity in the red zone last week. We had a first and goal from the four. And I was a little stubborn now. I thought first and goal from the four, you ought to be able to run it in. And we didn't do that. And so, you know, I, that, that, that I got to call a better game there, I guess. But uh, we, we should be scoring more points. I, I'm off the question of the tight end. I, I'm sorry for that. But uh, I, I would – but you know what? They're blocking well, though. I'm telling you what, you don't, there's so much that the tight ends have to do. Uh, again, we tell the kids all the time, 
you can't judge how you play totally by how many catches you get at receiver and tight end, you know, until you just have to take what you can get and make the most of it. You're talking about scoring points in close quarters. Have you guys uh, added anything to the to the mix, to the recipe, to try to put yourselves in a better position? When well, you yeah, yeah. You you always have a couple of things. I think each week, you know that that you do, and every week we've done that. And uh, you don't get too far away from what you do, though. Either the thing is, you just you, this, there's some of those things down there. So. You know, it, you need the ball in the right hash, you know, because you got a left handed quarterback or you need the ball here, you know, for certain plays because you don't have much room down there and you have to be really precise. And then they give you some different looks, you know, down there. Teams do. Usually they're a little more blitz, a little more pressure, but they don't have to cover you very far. You, you know, you can't, you can't run by anybody, so they can really get up on you. So there are certain things that work down there, certain things that, that, that are out of your play, your playbook or your play sheet, you know, when you're down there. We always try to have a few surprises. You know, the game is turned into – you better have a lot of two-point plays uh, because the game's so aggressive right now and because of the overtime rules. And then you you better have some fourth down calls too because you're going to go for it. You know, we've, we've scored twice, I think, on fourth down uh, in the last couple of weeks. So, you know, we're going for it a little bit more on fourth down this year. I think it's paid dividends for us. We, we just got to hold on to the ball and score a few more points So because I think we're good enough to do that. Okay, we have time for one more question for Coach Kirkpatrick. What's Coach it been like just to watch the growth this team has had so far this season? It's it's fun. That's the part I think you enjoy about the coaching is seeing the kids grow up and get better and, and those things. I wish the results was there right now. You know, it's like we're talking last week. You are what you are, but you know, record-wise, because it's a win business, and that's really in the end, that's all that really matters. But there is a process to winning. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're coming from we're, – we're so much different team than we were last year. I mean, we're, we're in games so much more competitively. We, we didn't compete with Tulsa last year. We, we had them beat this year. We're, we're seeing all that. We, the schedule's much tougher this year than it was last year. We don't have the non-conference games. We don't have those things to kind of get us going. But the kids are fun right now. We're having fun at practice. Uh, you know, we say they always remember November, you know, those games. And it's got the feel, you know, of when they were in high school playoffs. You know, it's dark out there now while we're practicing. It's nice and cool. It's football feeling type weather. And when we've got some kids that like football right now. We, we still might have a few that don't. Uh, they're kind of getting weeded out a little bit, the ones that don't like football. So the ones we're out there playing with right now like football, and you got to like football to be good at this level. So they're fun to be around right now. And, and it's not just one or two kids. It's a, it's a bunch of them. It's really almost all of them. Donnie, thank you for your time, buddy. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Yep, see you. Good job, Donnie. Excellent work. Okay, we got a check.